539. So the third year of Cyrus would be what? Three years later, almost. About three and a half years later. Daniel is given a revelation. What's it concerning? No. Something that's happening. Does anyone know what was happening at that time? You really have to go to the book of Ezra to find out what's happening at that time. Because Ezra chapter 1 is the first year of Cyrus. What did Cyrus permit the Jews to do? Go home. They go home. How long does it take them? About six months to travel back. And they get there and what happens when they begin building the city? They first set up the altar and according to Ezra, what happens? The Samaritans are there. Who are the Samaritans? Are they good people or bad people? Good people? Bad people? What did Jesus have to say about Samaritans? Somebody asked Jesus one day, who is my neighbor? And Jesus told the story. And what did he say in the story? There's a man going down from Jerusalem to where? Jericho. Okay? Why would somebody travel from Jerusalem to Jericho? Does anyone know? Well, Jerusalem is on a hill. And where's Jericho? On the banks of where? The Jordan River. You know, Jericho is the city that what happened? Joshua and his army did what? He marched around the city how many times? Once a day, for six days, and on the seventh day, how many times did they march around? Seven times, blew the trumpets, shouted, and what happened to the walls? Now you know Jericho? Okay. This man is going from Jerusalem to Jericho. Why would he go that far? Why would he travel? From Jerusalem to Jericho. He went to worship. What happened? Now he's going home. What was the great thing about Jericho? Jericho is the city of what? Jericho means what? The city of... Remember? Jerusalem is the city of what? Peace. Peace. Jer. Echo is the city of... Palms. They have a lot of dates there. It would be like Palm Springs. It was a resort city. It was also a city of priests and Levites. You get the picture? This man is traveling from Jerusalem to Jericho. He could have been a priest or a Levite. I don't know if I take this out. He's traveling, and what happens? He gets beat up. He gets robbed. They take his clothes. They leave him what? Let me do this, you do that. To die. A priest comes by and what does he do? A Levite comes by and what does he do? A Samaritan comes by and what does he do? Could you be a Samaritan today? If you leave church today and you see the person alongside the highway here that looks like they have no money and clothes and everything, can you take them to the inn or the hotel? Leave your credit card and say, hey, whatever this guy wants, give it to him. Can you do that? How much of a bill would this person run up? Or should that be our concern? What did he say? Here's the money for his bill. If he uses anything else, when I come back through, what's going to happen? So Jesus said, who's the name? Samaritans, good people or bad people? Ten lepers come to Jesus. He heals all ten. Nine take off and one come back to thank Jesus and thank him. Samaritans, good people or bad people? Jesus is very, very thirsty. You know what it's like to be very thirsty? I mean very thirsty. It's noon in the desert. He's sitting at a well and all the water's down there. 
But his own testimony is he had nothing to draw the water out. Now wait a minute. Is this the same Jesus who told the servants at the wedding feast of Cana? Fill up the water and now draw out. And what happened? The water had turned to... Now is this the same Jesus that's sitting at the well and he says, I have nothing to draw with? And a woman comes and he says, give me something to drink. And what did she say? Let me ask you, did she give Jesus something to drink? Is she a good Samaritan or a bad Samaritan? Did she give him a drink? She didn't give Jesus a drink, did she? In fact, he said what? If you had asked of me, I would have given you living water. And what she said, you know, the great words in society today, give me, have you ever said give me? That's what she said, give me this water so I don't have to come back. What did she want? She wanted indoor plumbing. She wanted a faucet in her house. She didn't want to walk all the way to the well, lower the bucket. Does Jesus give indoor plumbing? Is Jesus a faucet that you turn on that drips all night? What happens when we pull back the curtain? <laughs> the Samaritans were not good people. In fact, they were idolaters. And when the Jews wouldn't let them help them build the temple, they complain. In fact, according to chapters 1, 2, 3, and 4 of Ezra, we find in Ezra chapter 4, they actually made such a complaint, they hired somebody to go all the way back to the capital city, back, and make complaints. That's what Ezra 4 says, and the building stopped. They hired somebody. Did you read that again? The Jews went when Cyrus became king. Three years later, the building stopped. That's even what Ezra says. Daniel is there in the capital. He didn't go back because Daniel felt he could be more good in Babylon than he could in Jerusalem. Can I read the verse again? Because I'm hoping you have a better translation than I have. Remember, the NIV is not the best translation. They want it to be readable, not necessarily accurate. Here's what it should say. Daniel 10.1 In the third year of Cyrus, the king of Persia, a revelation was given to me. Its message was true, and it concerned... Mine says a great war. But your translation, I'm hoping, says something a little bit different. Troublesome times. Daniel just got word that the building has stopped. He got word that there was somebody behind the scenes preventing God's work from going forward. So what does Daniel do? You know what Daniel did. What was Daniel famous for? Was Daniel famous for being thrown into the fiery flames? Was he famous for that? He was not. What was he famous for? In fact, he was so much famous for praying, what happened? He got in trouble for praying. So what do you think Daniel's going to do here? At that time, I, Daniel, mourned for three weeks. How many days are three weeks? 21 days. In fact, the interesting thing about this statement in Daniel is the word that Daniel uses here is an idiomatic expression where the week here is a definite time period. 
It means seven days. You know how sometimes you'll say, you don't mind me saying this, do you? Next Sunday morning, a week from tomorrow, at 2.30 in the morning, you'll wake up and you'll say, I'm praying for Pastor Dodge because he is finally not with me. Okay. Next Sunday, 2.30 a.m., we're starting our climb up Mount Whitney. Okay? So I know you're going to wake up. Okay? But see, I can tell you, in a week from today, I'm going to climb Mount Whitney. It's actually longer than a week, isn't it? You understand what I'm saying? But the term that Daniel uses here would be better translated as 21 days. He's talking about a definite period. And it's important that you see that as we progress through the chapter. What did Daniel do? Verse 3. You know, I debated all week whether I was going to skip verse 3 or not. I've heard too many sermons on verse 3. I've heard so many sermons about Daniel. Do you know that I've heard people preach that Daniel is the only vegetarian in the Bible? Well, I want you to know this. There are no vegetarians in the Bible. There's none. Daniel's not a vegetarian. A Jewish person could not be a vegetarian. What? They have to eat the Passover lamb. If they did not eat the lamb, what would happen? They're out. This verse lets you know that Daniel was a medium. If that shakes your faith today, you should never put your faith in eating meat or not eating meat. You need to read what Paul said in Romans 14. It says, I gained the more for three weeks. I ate no. What? You know what that word actually says? You could put in there modern words. Donuts. Cakes. Pastries. <gasps> Daniel ate those things. Where did he live? He lived in the palace. That's what choice food means here. Did you know that? He gave up desserts. What else did he give up? He gave up meat. Now, guess what? This is the word for flesh food. It's not the word for food. Okay? He didn't give up food. He gave up meat. Daniel didn't eat unclean meat. But he did eat meat. Why am I telling you this? Because Daniel said, I'm giving up anything that may prevent the curtain from being opened. Do you understand? In that sense, Daniel knew that if he ate all those sweets, if he ate that box of chocolate that somebody gave him for Mother's Day, I'm, not, I'm sorry, Father's Day. Isn't that coming? I don't know, did they get dad's chocolate? Do the thing. They give the ass He said, I'm not going to allow anything that will cause that curtain to stick. You understand? Meat is going to affect my. This is Daniel talking. He didn't know all the stuff about what you eat affects. Maybe he did. Look what he gave up. It says what? It didn't even touch his... Uh oh, are you ready for this? I used no lotions at all for three weeks. Okay. Those of you who are a little bit dark like Daniel, what happens if you don't use lotion for three weeks? I'm just going to tell you, I, I, I have to take this from my wife. And if my wife doesn't put that lotion on two or three times a day, her skin actually gets a little scaly. Don't tell her I said that. <laughs> <laughs> or I'm in trouble. Okay? Alright? Those of you who have 
more color than I do? What happens if you don't put the lotion on, Ron? Okay, Ron's not going to give his personal testimony. <laughs> you understand? Then, what's he saying? He didn't put on sackcloth and ashes. He just said, I'm not putting lotion on. What's Daniel trying to say? Do you want to know what's behind the curtain? Do you really want to know? On the 24th day of the first month. What's the first month in the Bible? Nice hand? 24th day? Exactly three weeks Daniel's been praying? Now, I'm going to tell you something that may or may not shock you. The reason Daniel is saying three straight weeks, and remember he's specific, he's saying 21 days. And that as, as those who do the research has plugged in the 24th day of Nisan, During the third year of Cyrus, and I tell you this because you might get a little goosebump today. It happened to be a Sabbath day. A Sabbath day. What's the significance of that? Well, the very thing that happens in Daniel chapter 10 is the very thing that happened in Revelation chapter 1. I, John, was in the Spirit on what day? Pastor? You know it. What does it say? I, John, was in the Spirit on what day? Lord's Day. Is that Sunday? Are you sure? According to to Mark chapter 2, verse 27 and 28, Jesus said what? The Son of Man is Lord of what day? And according to the commandment, which day is the Lord's day? The Sabbath of who? The Lord your God. There's only one Lord's day in the Bible. John goes into vision on the Sabbath. And a long time before John, for three straight weeks, Daniel's praying, he goes into vision on the Lord's Day. Amazing. Amazing parallels. What happened? As I was standing by the bank of the great river of the Tigris, I looked up and there before me was a man dressed in linen with a belt of gold around his waist. His body was like chrysolite. His face was like lightning. His eyes like flaming torches. His arms and his legs like gleaming burnished bronze. And his voice like the sound of a multitude. What do you think of that? How would you feel if you saw that? You ready? Should I read it for you? Revelation chapter 1. You want to see how it's almost exactly the same? Revelation chapter 1. Listen what it says. I turned, verse 12. I turned around to see the voice that was speaking to me. And when I turned, I saw seven gold lampstands. And among them was someone like a son of man. He was dressed in a robe, reaching down to his feet with a golden sash around his chest. His head and his hair were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were like blaming, blazing fire. His feet were like the bronze glowing in a furnace, and his voice like the voice of a rushing water. Isn't that amazing? Is it the same description? Sounds like they're seeing the same person. Now wait a minute. Daniel wrote 500 years before Christ, and John Walk wrote 100 year A.D. That's 600 years. 
how could this person still be alive? Well, John tells you who it is, doesn't he?
Jesus says to Peter, James, and John, come with me. And it says they climbed up a mountain. Sandy, I don't know if it was the Stolos mission field. They climbed up a high mountain, it says. And when they got there, they were a little sleepy. And you know what the disciples were famous for. Jesus started the prayer and they did what? They always went to sleep. But somehow when they, when they were awakened, they looked up and they saw Jesus talking to Moses and Elijah. How did they know it was Moses? And how did they know it was Elijah? Do you know what Moses looks like? Do you know what Elijah looks like? Can I even say this? Do you know what Jesus looks like? We just read the description. Say yes, now I know. But would you know him if you saw him? How did Peter, James, and John know that it was Moses and Elijah? Name tag? Hello, my name is Moses. Hello, my name is Elijah. How did they know? Jesus said, how you doing, Moses? How you doing, Elijah? You understand? And what happened? Said Jesus turned as white as snow. And what happened? They heard a voice saying, what? This is my son. Listen to him. What happened when they heard that voice? They went to sleep, and the next thing they knew, you've got to love the verse in Mark. Mark, chapter 1. 9. They saw Jesus alone. Very great verse. Because Daniel heard the voice. And he went into sleep. And what happened? Verse 10, a hand touched me and set me trembling on my hands and knees. And he said, Daniel, you're highly esteemed. Have you heard that one before? I hope you'll say yes. We heard that in chapter 8 and chapter 9. This is Gabriel talking. Consider carefully the words I'm about to speak to you. And stand up, for I have now been sent to you. And when he said this to me, I stood up trembling. Here it is again. Daniel's at the feet of Gabriel and he says, Daniel, stand up. You're not supposed to worship me. There's two people here. Gabriel touched him on the shoulder and said, stand up, Daniel. I've got a message for you. I've been sent here. How long did it take Gabriel to get Huh? How long? One second? Two seconds? How long did it take Gabriel? He's looking, he sees this glorious being, he falls down as though he's dead, and Gabriel says, I was sent to you. How quick is that? Are God's angels that quick? If they're that quick, why has Daniel been praying for three weeks? And Gabriel continued, Do not be afraid, Daniel. Since the first day that you set your mind to gain understanding and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard, and I have come in response to them. Do you like the prayer, don't you? Do you like what Gabriel said? You should be encouraged. Because he recognized two things. He didn't say, Daniel, I've come because you gave up chocolate. Did he say that? Does anyone hear that? In there? He didn't say, Daniel, I came because you gave up. You know, you fell in the blank. A goal. He didn't say that. He didn't say, I came because you gave up fish. Did he say that? Why did he come? I want you to hear it. Because you need to hear why there was a response. Daniel, as soon as you started to pray, we were already working. The rest was for you, Daniel.
Because what does it say? We recognize that you were sincere in your prayer. Why? Because you prayed constantly, number one, what'd you do? You gave up donuts and sweets and meat and everything. That showed Daniel's sincerity. It didn't get an ear from God. Do you understand? Doing those things are for us, not for God. God said, Daniel, I knew you were sincere. Because look at what you did. You didn't even put on the lotion. Did you catch it? That's not for God. The angel Gabriel says, I, we heard you when you first started praying. The rest is that we saw that you were serious about your prayers. How serious are you? How serious? We're looking behind the curtain today. Verse 13. But the prince of the Persian kingdom resisted me for 21 days. How long? Now we're looking behind the scene. What happened? What happened for 21 days? Who's the prince of Persia? Can I tell you something? Henry? Many people have said that the Prince of Persia is the devil. I cannot find anywhere in Scripture where the devil has ever been called the Prince of Persia. Can't find it. Sorry. Not there. He's been called the Prince of the Power of the Air. He's been called the Prince of this world. He's been called the king of Tyre. Never the prince of birth. In fact, as we look at history, we find that during the third year of the reign of Cyrus, his son, Cambyses II, was also ruled. And he was the prince of birth. Cyrus' is son, Cambyses is sad. There's something about Cambyses that you should know, and you'll understand why it's here. Cambyses <coughs> believed that there was only one God in the universe. We call him a monotheist. He believed in one God. And he believed that this God was the creator of everything. And this God was all-knowing, all-powerful. Starting to sound like something? Creator of all things? Author of only what is good? In fact, his name. You may have seen it on the way to church today. You may even go out in the parking lot and see it today. His name? Mazda. <laughs> Mazda. You ever heard Mazda before? Cambyses II considered himself. To the world for Zoroaster. That's right. History will reveal it. That he believed his God was the only true God and any other God needed to be wiped out. It was him who was contacted by the Samaritans. It was him who made a trip all the way to Egypt to do away with all their idols. It was him that opposed everything that was Jewish. And it's him that prevented the Jews from getting to it. In fact, he reigned from the year 530 to the year 522. 
And it was in 522 at his death that Darius I signed another decree for Israel to continue building. It's this prince of Persia that resisted the work of God. Listen, Gabriel. Since the first day you set your mind, we urge you. But the prince of Persia has resisted me 21 days. Then Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me. Because I was detained there with the king of Persia. Now I have come to explain to you what will happen to your people in the future. For the vision concerns the time yet to come. What happened? What happened? What's the difference between Mazda and God? Is there a difference? We're looking behind the scene here. Why did it take until 522? Another 16 years before the building started. It says right here. Gabriel tried to influence. Well, what happened? The Prince of Persia said what? You mean to tell me God allowed the Prince of Persia to have her power of choice? Are you telling me that? You mean to tell me God didn't try to force him to make a decision? Is that what you're telling me? You're telling me behind the scenes, God is always working to bring about good? To bring about the best for us? And we cannot see it? Is that what you're telling me? You know, God had a prophet by the name of Balaam. You ever remember Balaam? Do you know he was a prophet of God? He made some great predictions in Scripture, did you know that? In Numbers, you can find some great predictions about Jesus coming and being born. A star in Jacob will arise. It was that star that the men from the east saw that led them to Jerusalem and then Bethlehem. And they opened their gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh to the baby and his mother and Joseph. It was Balaam who made that prediction. It was Balaam who said, God, these men want me to go and curse this people. And God said, don't go. Balaam said, stay the night. And I'll ask God all night. It says, Balaam asked God in the morning. God said, don't go with them. And the man left. And they came back. They offered him more money and more honor. And he said, God, can I go? And God said, go with them, but only say what I'm going to say. You know the story. Balaam gets on his faithful donkey, and what happens? Donkey sees something that Balaam can't see. Because you see, somehow a donkey can see behind the curtain. But sometimes God's people are so blinded, they can't see. But there is a curtain. And somehow the donkey could see behind the curtain. And what did he do? He turned off the road. And what did the donkey see then? He saw the angel standing with sword drawn. And what did the donkey do? He went into the vineyard. And he saw the angel standing there with the sword. And he went up against the wall and crushed Balaam's foot. And Balaam started beating him. And the donkey talked. You ever talked to a donkey before? Maybe you have. But has a donkey ever talked to him? 
The donkey looked at him and said, Haven't I been your faithful donkey? He says, Yeah. You have been my faithful donkey. Why did you do this to me? And then it says, The curtain was pulled aside. And, gave, and Balaam saw the angel with the drawn sword. Balaam realized who the real donkey was. There's a curtain. We can't see beyond the curtain. You know, when Jesus hung on the cross, it said that the curtain was torn in two from top to bottom. And some 40 years later, when General Titus under the orders of Vespasian, the ruler of the empire, attacked Jerusalem. He recorded these words. He said he went into the most holy place and looked behind the curtain. And this is what his words were. He says, I saw nothing. God. Was Somehow, in his mind, he thought God was there. He thought God was behind that curtain in the most holy place. But Jesus proved that God wasn't there. Because Jesus died outside the city. And the veil in the temple was torn from top to bottom. God wasn't in there. God told Solomon a long time ago, I will let my name be there, but I will not be there. You can't put God behind a curtain. Paul says, today we have a curtain over our eyes. We see through a glass now. But God is trying to reveal to us that the minute we seek Him, if we are sincere in our seeking, He's beginning to work. He will not force the issue. God allows free will. But God is working in our man. Daniel 10 wants us to know that not only do we have Gabriel, but we have a whole lot more angels. And not only that, we have the Son of God. And when He comes, things happen. You know, happen. Daniel sought the Lord, it says, for three full weeks. He gave up his lotion. He gave up his sweets. He gave up his meat. But it wasn't that that caused God to respond. He said, Daniel, when you started to pray, we were already working in your hand. God is working in our hand. Let's trust Him, although we can't see behind the curtain today. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we're grateful for chapter 10. Although our lives are not like Daniel, yet at times they are. Many times we seek you, but not with the sincerity that Daniel did. It wasn't for him that he sought you. He wanted to find out why the building project had stopped. Father, sometime in our life it seems like the building project has stopped. We've reached the wall. We don't know what's happening. But Father, today, can the curtain be pulled back just a little bit? We know for Balaam's donkey, you pulled back the curtain and he saw the angel that was standing there with drawn sword. Father, today, pull back the curtain from our eyes so that we can see that those who are for us are more than those who are against us. And if God is for us, who can be against us? We know that the forces of this world are ever against us. We know that there's darkness, that there's evil. But Father, today, may your light flood our hearts so that we can realize that although darkness surrounds your throne, righteousness and justice 
are at its foundation. Father, we're grateful that we know that you're working in our behalf today. And maybe there's somebody here today that wants to say, Lord, pull back the curtain so that I can see you working in my life. Father, you see each one today. I pray that you honor their faith in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.